Hello everyone, happy Saturday. I'm Steve, Mark's around. Hi everybody! That's Mark, and this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back. It is the weekend, so we know what that means. Today's coffee is heavy cream, because I'm still on the keto thing, sugar-free pumpkin caramel scone syrup, and a little bit of erythritol. So it's not too bad. I'm digging heavy cream. I'm kind of liking the keto thing. So today we are going to revisit our friend Chantal, Chantal Marie, Booty Beauty, Big Beautiful Me. As we know, she's had a very big week, but before we get to the elephant in the room, we're going to do our usual shtick where we pick up where we left off from last week, review a couple of her videos, and then we'll discuss a little bit some of the things that have been on her community board because she is quite active. Now Mark's going to be here briefly because um, he has a couple errands to run. So before I go into my rather um, verbose discussion, uh, Mark, do you want to share a few thoughts uh, real quickly? Hold on. Because Mark watches all the videos because I'm going through my notes and taking things and you know how that goes. <laughs> but he has to sit through all of it with me, so... I do. So what are I your... do lovingly. Hi, everybody! This is Mark for anyone who doesn't watch the rest of our, <laughs> our stuff. Don't look. I'm not ready. I'm, I'm out in the yard getting it to winterize because we have a... Well, I guess it's a nice day. It's 40. Yeah. Um, but I'm just winterizing the yard and everything. But, um, so what? Chantal. Chantal. Thoughts on this week's, um... Chantal. Oh, my God. Thoughts you on the videos, what? maybe. You know what I was thinking? What? If she was a different person, I think we'd be friends. Yeah. That's all. That about... Well, thank you, Mark. That about sums that up. And I'd have to concur if she was a different kind of person. Well, I'll, I'll expand on that a little bit as we as we kind of go along. <laughs> you so, know what I mean. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Remember, we're supposed to be the nice review channel. We so, are. We, are. <laughs> we don't even do a review channel. We just talk crap on her once a week and we try to put a nice spin on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but at well, any rate. I'm out. All right, see ya. So, where we left off, she was uh, doing a fresh deli turkey and cheese sandwich mukbang. This is the one where she took a bra off because she's free and liberated. And this was just on the heels of the two-hour documentary that was done, a Canadian Horror Story by Toad McKinley. So she's feeling very free and unfettered, and I'll show you, I'll make the biggest spectacle of myself, and you don't own me, and don't tell me where to fart, and whatever. Um, so she went through that video. And that was going to be home-cooked food leading up until surgery. Then we go into the community board where she says, and this was about six days ago or so, screw it, I'm having a bad day. Who wants late night pizza poppers video and story time? So of course, she can't resist. And we go into the next video, pizza poppers and jalapeno, <laughs> pizza pizza and jalapeno poppers mukbang. And she gives you a warning that there's going to be immature subject matter. Uh-huh. So as she's introducing you know, setting everything up and talking. She says the delivery man, Aziz, um, came. Now she knows the delivery man by name, and it had been a while. There was something almost kind of sentimental about it. I don't know if that's heartwarming or sad, but it, it is what it is. Um, she's excited, very excited, it seems, to be home alone. BB's not there. She started to say his... And I want to say his sister's not there, but I thought she was back in Africa. Um, so, I don't know about that. Uh... It reminded me of, like, when I would be home alone and I'd have, like, some booze stashed somewhere and I know I could drink without anyone harassing me or bothering me or telling me to stop. Like, it reminded me of, like, those excited moments where you can indulge in your fix and no one's gonna jump in your way and try to rip it out of your hands or guilt you for doing it. So that part oddly kind of resonated with me. The rest of it didn't resonate with me at all as far as this video went. So, again, she burned herself on the beauty bite, took a bite of a jalapeno popper, and it exploded in her face like a grenade. Um, probably a personal choice. I'm not l willing to lose my eye because I can't let my food cool. But, again, that's, that's me. That's not everybody. Some people like their food really hot, I suppose. She goes then into a TM sto TMI story time about her French lover from when she was younger. Um, story times with her are often taken with a grain of salt. I can see why. She herself has said in the past that details are murky and she's filling in blanks. So she's kind of given herself a get out of truth free card with some of them. And, you know, it's meant to be a story, I guess. So 
the issue with this story time is that it makes Chantal sound like a absolute sexual predator and a criminal as she goes along. I didn't say she was. Don't. But sounds like, maybe, and you'll see why. So she says this guy is a good lover, but she also mentions that a lot of times she would show up at his place because he didn't answer his phone. And so she would just kind of do the pop-in. Um, there was the time she's describing in this where she let herself in to his apartment after not getting return phone calls. Um, and she had just purchased a new... Um, lube um from a store that sells things like that i'm trying to stay monetized <laughs> um which ended up giving her a urinary tract infection anyway um she goes into his apartment with her paraphernalia waits for him he comes in he's in the shower she's still lingering he's making noises and singing and and stuff like that and she says, oh, you know, desperate much. I'm like, ah, that's cute. It's criminal much. Let's say the roles were reversed. And she was in her home. And there was a man waiting who had already stopped off and had purchased things. like It's like so to get your predator. And she shows up and he's lingering, hiding behind a pile of hoard or clothes or whatever. Listening while she's in the shower. Waiting to pounce, you know, when she comes out. Had you swapped genders there, it sounds much less cute the other way around. But maybe I'm just splitting hairs. So, so that was a story time. I don't know. So then we go into an unboxing of FabFitFun Winter 2019. And this is, somebody sent her a box for free to review. No biggie. We've, I, I say no biggie because we've done it. We had um, a Hungry Root reached out to us and one of their, I guess, influencers said, hey, could, we'll send you guys a box. Could you do an honest review? And we did. We did a review a couple times of their products. We actually happened to like them, which is good. That was our honest review because it could have been really unfortunate if we didn't. Um, so I'm not going to, you know, kill her for that. She basically just went through the box and she kind of oohed and odd about the stuff they sent her. And it was supposed to be a $50 box with $200 worth of stuff in it. There was a lot of coupons. There was a fake fur blanket, some reusable makeup wipes where she did this quick jump shot to like a tight look up on her face where she's wiping off her eye makeup and she's still narrating. Totally freaked me out because I was looking down writing and I look up and it's not what I remember seeing uh, when I looked down. So that kind of threw me a little bit. But she liked all the stuff. It was like free stuff. So, and then there was a video that went missing that I couldn't find. I guess she put it up and took it down. And it was Naked Coconut Company products. Edible beauty type thing. Um, oh, and special thanks to Jamie's reactions and reviews. I was digging around looking for the video and you had saved it and reacted to it. So thank you for posting that. I went to your channel to watch the original content. I usually don't like to go to reaction channels because they're reacting and I don't want to suck up their thoughts. But, um... I had to do what I had to do to be able to find it because I didn't catch it when it was up. So thank you, Jamie. Uh, the edible beauty products, um, she said a company approached her. It was a very small company, uh, batch made stuff done in a kitchen, 100% edible. <clears throat> Just because something is edible doesn't mean you have to eat it. I think this goes without Play-Doh is edible, but you know. Um, so she tried stuff and she was like putting it on and then tasting it and putting it on and then tasting it. Now that video went up and that video came down. Was that Chantal's call? Did the vendor request that she take it down? Maybe the vendor didn't like that she was eating the beauty products, even though they are edible. Um, it, she is foodie beauty, which she indicated in this video. You know, nobody else pointed out the fact that, you know, oh, wouldn't she get makeup she could eat or, you know, face scrub that she could, you know, put in a smoothie or whatever. So. So that video went up and it went away. So the big event of the week though was that she was going for surgery. And this had been coming for, let's say two years, okay? There's mukbangs from when she was still a mukbang channel and exclusively a mukbang channel a couple years ago where she's talking about a similar surgery and a similar lead up where I'm not gonna be eating fast food, I'm gonna be eating some healthier foods because I have to get ready and I have to get my stamina up and yap, yap, yap. So, it looks like leading up to this on the community board, she was kind of posting some quick updates, trying to lead everybody up 
to, this is going to glare probably, so I'll try to make this quick, uh, the actual surgery date. So she posts some crap about her cats and how cute they are and she just can't deal with it, yop, yop, yop. Then she went over the board and was like, well, let's just have pizza and poppers because life's hard. Um, she did put a post up thanking all her loyal subscribers who stay with her despite all the negativity I receive on YouTube. So, so, so many more of you love me and show me that in every video. Second, I will have two videos out in a surgery prep to Tuesday as my surgery is Wednesday. So we did get, I guess, those two videos, the FabFit and then eating the, the beauty products were the two. I don't remember seeing a surgery prep video unless it went up and down. So a couple pictures of her with her cats. Thought we might find it interesting about her cat's breed, and then somebody corrected her and said it's not special, it's very pedestrian, your cat. Um, her channel was made eligible for membership. I know little about channel memberships and how far that goes. I look at my own privileges when I go to our channel and it says ineligible. If it was eligible, I don't even know what we would do. What What's exclusive to us? So she also indicates that down the road, as we're going forward, so she's on a roll here, um, thinking of keeping her channel as a mukbang channel and starting a channel with Pete's called Cheats Does Stuff or Chantal and Pete's Do Stuff. Uh, they would vlog adventures with Pete's and then she asks for, you know, what do you guys think? Any recommendations? Uh, she has tried two channels before. She tried to do, I think it was a weight loss channel and then her regular content. She just, she just tried splitting up channels before and then deactivated one completely. So... This would be different because the, the feeders would just go to the mukbang channel and then people interested like in her lifestyle stuff would, would go to the other. Sounds promising because Chantal did, I think, hit it on the head in one video that she has a very diverse audience. She has folks that are just there for the feeding, people that, believe it or not, like those story times and the TMIs. Um, there's people that do like scenic tours of Canada that are interested in makeup and unboxings. And she has, she's broadcasted herself in a lot of different areas, I think. So w is any one of those groups big enough to cater to that you could ditch the others and still have a successful channel? She probably could bank with the feeders because these mukbangs, I mean, I'm looking at them right now. Pizza Pizza and Jalapeno Poppers mukbang had 37,000 views as of six days ago. The Fab Fit Fun Box, which came out the next day, had 12. So she knows where the money is. That's three times as many, you know, views. So... Who knows where the channel will go? Next, she posted the pre-op instructions of what she's supposed to have done. So the instructions for pre-op are very different than I've seen before. Most of the ones, I've never had major surgery. Um, most I've had is like a scope where they, or like they nick something off or, or like things like that. Um, but for family members I've known who have, they're a lot more restrictive, I guess, here. I don't know if it's a Canadian thing, I, I don't know, or the type of surgery she was having. But she was drinking a lot of fluids right up until before the operation. It's just different instructions. I'm not saying she made that stuff up. It looks sort of official here. So she put those up to post. And then something about um, the new COPPA thing. So that's something everyone's reading up and dealing with. Then a question about whether or not people fart during surgery, and what if she farts during surgery? I appreciate that she's trying to keep it light, but good God, woman. So next, there's a picture of her in her bed at the hospital, smiling. She's in her gown. She's got the wrist thing on. Now, for us doubting Thomases, which I, I initially wasn't but had started have started to turn into one, I'm thinking that could be from any one of the many hospital stays that she's even told us about, not to mention ones that she hasn't. So at this point, I wasn't too convinced. This was three days ago. I wasn't too convinced that she was still having surgery, actually, because um, I'm suspicious at this point. Then another day goes by, and there's a picture of her looking very poorly in the hospital, cloth on the head, oxygen going. I was concerned with surgery because something had didn't occur to me is that she could die in her sleep on any given night without the CPAP. So I'm guessing anesthesia was probably an issue. And the bulk of her weight's in the front, and I know that goes on to the heart. And I only know that from watching 600 Pound Life. I'm not a doctor, so don't come for me for that. Um, she looked rough. She looked rough. To the point where I think even supportive people 
uh, were commenting under there, why would you post this, you know? But she probably felt compelled to show proof that she was in the hospital. Then she says, hey guys, doing a lot better today. If all goes well, then I may be discharged tomorrow. I will video as soon as I can talking about my experience. XO, miss you guys. And then five hours ago, it is right now about 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this video is only good as of now. If she posts something later, I have, oh. Um, hi guys, I will get home today around 11. The doctor came to look at my wound so I can go home, but I am on sponge bath for the next couple of days and look like this. She looks fine in the picture, honestly. She just looks like her without makeup. Um, so I'm going to be, I'm not going to be making videos for now, but I'll be back as soon as I can. I will do a video talking about my surgery, so if you have any questions, please comment below. Thank you. Some of the questions below were, well, did you get the full hysterectomy? What happened? What this? What that? So she's going to regale us with what happened, apparently, at some point soon. Now, as to We Cynical um, and some other folks who were hedging bets on, is she getting the surgery? Is she not getting the surgery? I was kind of dealing with a little bit of... Uh, I don't want to say a moral dilemma. Am I a bad person for doubting that this person is going to have major surgery? Do I feel guilty for not taking her at her word because now she's showing pictures that she has had surgery and that she's been in the hospital for a few days? Um, no. No, it's not wrong to doubt all this. First of all, this problem's been going on for years. It's years. And there's been a number of false starts, documented false starts. And who knows what goes on off camera. Um, the last surgery she had was canceled. Not her fault, according to her, but it was canceled. So weave that in with other misinformation that Chantal has provided over time. Um, Buildups that have been letdowns and other things like that then I think realistically, no, it is not cynical to have doubted right up until the end, until you see her in the hospital bed, that something actually happened. There's probably still folks out there that doubt it was even that kind of surgery. And some, the most, um, cynical is maybe not the right word, the most cautious with their trust, we'll say that, um, may still not believe she had that at all. The only thing that made me think that she, that to me, that looked like evidence that something happened. One, she's, she looked like crap in the hospital. She looked like someone who just had surgery. She said that they cut her and she had an incision and she had a pillow on her lap. And I'm aware from people who've had um, C-sections, my mother had a few, I was her third, um, that you keep a pillow close to your tummy so if you cough, you can press down on it and it kind of keeps things from splitting open and your whole innards falling out. So I... I bought that part of it. I'll be curious to see what the entire procedure was when she left, because initially it was a hysterectomy, then it kind of backpedaled to exploratory. It may result in a full hysterectomy. Um, she started advertising the most extreme outcome and then backpedaled on it a little bit by a little bit. Um, is that misleading? Well, if she knew from the beginning that it wasn't going to be a whole hysterectomy and then she just kind of exaggerated it, well, yeah, <clears throat> that's misleading. Um, but again, going back to my to my original point on this, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with doubting the fact that she was going to go through with this. Um, I think she isn't going too far to show pre-op instructions and pictures in the hospital. I think she felt compelled to do it, and I think if she wanted to build anything like I think trust is trashed with, with a lot of her viewers, but if she was going to build anything like trust, she was going to have to show some receipts. And unfortunately, the receipts are, are like that. I mean, there's probably going to be people that want to see incisions, and they want to see stitches. Um, that's pretty personal. I don't know that I would need to see all that to believe her. Um, I personally, in my gut, think, yeah, she had some surgery. I believe she had some surgery. I think it was put off for too long, probably. Um, I've seen videos of her from a couple of years ago. She doesn't look any better prepped for surgery now than she did then. She looks like it was probably more high risk. But Chantal is a human being worthy of dignity and respect, like the rest of us. So I hope that she is resting comfortably. I hope that she um, recovers soon. I don't know that she will have the help that she's 
had before for the last one. I know, I don't know if her family flew back in. I don't know that BB took off more time from work, so she may have to be just handling a lot of this stuff herself. Um, the idea of Chantal having a sponge bath seems like the kind of thing she might get used to. Um, I have noticed over a period of time, Chantal seems to like some of the attention that she gets from having medical issues and medical emergencies. So I don't imagine she's comfortable post-op having stitches and sutures and having been cut and who knows what was actually removed and the mental toll that takes and the fear that went into it. I mean, she's, like I said, she's a person like anybody else. I can think she's a manipulative shrew, but she's still a human being on some level. And, you know, going into that, she was probably scared. And now that it's over, it's going to be a tough recovery. But at the same time, it draws a lot of attention to her. As it should, she needs the help. But there's a certain kind of satisfaction that a person who likes attention for being sick gets. And I think, I, I wonder how long and protracted this recovery is going to be um, in order to, to keep fulfilling what I think is that need that she has. So, um, so bottom line, uh, rest well, Chantal. Hopefully you'll be back up making some content for the rest of us soon to, to weigh in on. Um, and take it easy. And I hope your sponge baths are are quite comfortable for you. So thank you all for watching. Please do subscribe, hit the like button. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smokey Steve Space and Mark or on Instagram at Smokey Steve and Mark. Our email address and our contact information is all listed below. Thank you all for watching. Enjoy your weekend. Remember, weekend means stuff in your coffee in an unfinished basement. Take care and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.